Hey you guys, what's going on? It is Wednesday, May 25th, and I am here with a bunch of updates for you. So this may be a little bit on the longer side, but stick with me. Um, today we had the FDA Q&A webinar. Um, it was targeted more for um, like shops rather than manufacturers. They are gonna be doing a follow-up call at some point uh, for all manufacturers, but they haven't announced the date yet. So I will absolutely keep you guys posted when they do um, decide to move forward with that. But in the meantime, um, today's call was interesting. It was mainly, um, basically they, they compiled all the questions that everybody's been asking and sending in and addressed them one by one. Um, Chris and I, uh, disagree on, on how effective it was. I personally um, left the call more confused um, than when it started. Um, I also know that I've been, you know, I'm still kind of sick and so it's possible that, that maybe my brain is just foggy anyway. But I definitely had to, you know, talk to a lot of people who were on the call and try to get some clarification and make sure that, and compare notes and make sure that we were all on the same page because they definitely did their best to confuse us all. Um, so going over uh, kind of the, the meat and potatoes of the call, um, or the webinar rather, um, the main points were that, um, charging, you know, you got to charge for, for testers and samples in the shops. The days of, you know, free samples are over. Um, and so if you charge for them, it's okay. And a lot of just our local shops that we're friends with, we were talking to them about it and um, they were saying, well, you know, maybe we charge, you know, X amount of money and then when they purchase, we'll credit it back or credit it towards their purchase. And that's one way to get around it. Another shop was toying with the idea of possibly doing um, a, a membership, like an annual membership, tasting, sampling uh, membership. So. Um, I guess that could feasibly work. They haven't really been too clear on what exactly um, you know that looks like. I think they're just more concerned with charging, um, and by charging, you know, kind of weeding out the accessibility um, or the easy accessibility of samples and shops. Um, they also said that you know age verification is huge, so 18 and over only, um, and you need to to make sure you're doing your due diligence. Um, to card everybody that that comes into the shop or is buying from you online. Um, there was a specific question um, where someone did ask, okay, you know, we understand the whole age verification thing. We're not arguing you guys with you guys on that front, but how do you suggest we go about it or, or how do you mandate that we go about age verification? And um, the representative, the FDA rep who responded to the question said, yes, you do have to do age verification. That's great, but the question was how, and she clearly skipped right on over that. So um, no details on that just yet. I know that a lot of people have talked about possibly, um, you know, taking two different forms of IDs and, and keeping that on file, but then if you keep that on file, then you know, you've got to up your, your security software and, and register with, you know, these other sites and there's all these other requirements that go into it. So um, I guess that remains to be to be seen. Um, but just a, a heads up that, and, and I think pretty much every responsible shop or vendor is, is IDing anyway. Um, but make sure, you know, that you are checking every single person that comes into your shop because the FDA is going to secret shop you um, sometime after August 8th. And so you want to make sure that, you know, you're not that one shop that says, oh, you look old and, you know, you for sure look old enough, don't ID and then, you know, get in a whole heap of trouble. Um, one thing that, that really has a lot of people frustrated and, and is kind of ridiculous is that they are now um, throwing cotton, wire, batteries, um, and even zero nicotine juice. That is all now falling under the regulations because they are all considered a tobacco product. Um, originally, when, when the regulations came out, we had thought that, okay, fine, if it doesn't have nicotine, that, that nicotine was the main qualifier. And I think I even reported here that nicotine was kind of the main qualifier in, in making something subject to the um, regulations, but it actually turns out that no, it is um, 
any anything that can be used to potentially consume nicotine is in fact under the regulations. So zero nicotine juice, cotton wire batteries, they're all a means to an end when it comes to vaping. Um, you can do it yourself. DIY is fine um, as long as it's for personal consumption. You start giving away your juice or you start trying to sell your juice and you're now falling under the regulations. So as long as it's DIY, you're good to go. You don't need any kind of license to buy or use nicotine if it's DIY. So, um, I mean, I guess if you're making your own liquid, then then you can keep on and, and you'll be fine. But for all of us manufacturers, that certainly, and, and all of the stores who sell it, that certainly makes things much more difficult. Um, if you sell anything, even to a friend, if you're selling a device or you're selling e-liquid or anything, if there is an exchange of money for goods, um, it makes you a retailer. So you don't need to have a B&M, you don't need to have a legit business, um, you know, any exchange of money for, for products automatically makes you a retailer, just FYI. Um, and if you're giving away e-liquid, so you don't sell it, but you give it away, guess what? Now it qualifies as a free sample and you're not allowed to do that either. So they've kind of got us cornered here um, on the e-liquid the e front where we're sort of boxed in. Um, by December, all manufacturers will have to register with the FDA. There's no cost to register. Um, sorry, okay, wait. I might have confused that. Um, so in December, all manufacturers have to register. Shops do not have to register unless they are making their own e-liquid in-house. Then they become a, um, a manufacturer and they do have to register. Again, there's no cost to register. Um, and I do have the document. Um, I'll just have to I'll upload it um, to my written blog. So make sure you check that out if you need it. Um, I swear to God, I think I have like a bee or something crawling up my back. Um, May 8th, 2016, or 2018, sorry, 2018, May 8th, um, new warnings take effect, and another thing that has people, store owners, really upset is that um, you are not allowed to build or advertise that you build coils in your shop because then it makes you a manufacturer. So one loophole that shops were potentially looking at was, Okay, well, what if I don't build them, I repair them? You know, does that then kind of skirt around that rule? Um, I don't know. I don't think the FDA knows. And really, I, really the, what I got out of the webinar is that, you know, the FDA sort of rushed to put out these um, regulations, publish this document, and a lot of things were left really vague. And so now as all of us companies and vapors, you know, start to figure out what what this means and um, ask the questions, in a way it almost hurts us because by trying to be responsible and trying to be informed about, you know, the do's and don'ts of the regulations moving forward, we're almost kind of giving the FDA all these additional ways to screw us. And so um, it's, it's kind of this whole thing, uh, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Um, it's, it, was, it was certainly a very frustrating call, to say the least. Um, everyone that I've spoken to that, that was on the webinar was, was kind of like, you know, what the hell, this is, this is getting so much worse than we originally thought it was going to be. Um, so, you know, I mean, frustrating, yes, um, you know, infuriating, totally, but we're not giving up. We're still going to keep fighting. Um, other, other than this webinar, we've actually had a pretty good week in the vape industry. Sorry, I needed a vape. Um, Larry Faircloth. Let's talk about him for a minute. He is an awesome guy out of West Virginia. He's a delegate. 
Um, and he is doing big things for the vape industry. He is a vapor himself and he is leading the charge. I mean, there are people all over the country, not just in West Virginia, that have joined his group and are supporting him um, because he is going balls to the wall, like fighting for us, man. He's very outspoken and, and he's standing up for all of us. And so we definitely, you know, respect him, appreciate him and owe a lot to him. Um, this past Monday, the 23rd, a bunch of uh, West Virginia businesses, vapors, they all met at the West Virginia State Capitol. And um, they basically were protesting a new vaping tax. And guess what, you guys? They defeated the tax, man. It did not pass. Larry Faircloth was there on the floor, you know, fighting for vapors' rights. And all of these vapors were there. Um, to support him and and they showed up it was it was excellent um one of the things that was said was that it was a lot of business owners that were there um there weren't a lot of um you know just of the general public that were there to kind of show support so that's something to keep in mind you guys you don't have to own a business to be invested in this i mean i think a lot of people it's it's easy to take for granted you know, our ability to vape right now. And it, it's really hard, you know, because it's grown so much, it's really hard to imagine a world where vaping isn't as prevalent as it is now. But it, it, they're trying to make it happen. And um, we really, really have to be diligent about every day, you know, making our voices heard and doing what we can to organize ourselves on an advocacy front, um, you know, to, to protect ourselves. So, um, Kudos to you, Larry Faircloth. You're awesome. Make sure you guys check out his page. Drop him a line. Let him know how much you appreciate him. He's got a group um, as well. Make sure you join up. He's doing big things for us. He's seeing results. He doesn't take no for an answer. He's demanding answers. Good job, sir. We appreciate you. Um, we also... Just today, I got an email, an additional two politicians have joined us in supporting H.R. 2058, so we are now up to 56. Again, all Republicans, sadly, the Democrats are not um, endorsing us at this point, but continue to contact your representatives. If they've already shown their support, then send them a thank you note. Let them know how much you appreciate their support just so we can kind of drive that point home and, and keep them on board with us. Um, and if your reps are not, you know, involved, then, hey, hit them up, man. Let them know that it's, it's the cool kids thing. We need them on board. We need them to join us. And this is why. Tell them what impact vaping's made on your life, on your family's life, on your friends' lives. You know, share your stories. Give them the facts. Educate, educate, educate. And... Um, I know that, uh, I know I've heard from other people that, you know, they've called their politicians and said, well, I work for a vape company and, uh, you, if you, you know, try to outlaw and shut down my job, then you're going to have to pay me unemployment. And I was like, well, that's one way to go about it. That's pretty awesome. Um, you know, everybody's got their, their different ways of going about it. So, you know, and, and also we're the people here, man. We put these politicians in power. We get them to their cushy offices um, and, and put them in this position where they can make this legislation. So let them know that if they don't support you and what you need to, leave, to lead a better, healthier life, then you're not going to support them in their future campaigns, period. End of story. Um, so anyways, that aside, um, PETA came out this week and showed their support for the vaping industry. They said they are very much against the new FDA regulations simply because um, if they, you know, if the vaping industry were to go away or dim greatly diminish from what it is now, then smoking is going to go back, be up on the rise again. Um, and what that's going to mean is additional testing on animals. The uh, tobacco companies have horrific tests that they perform on animals and it's mandatory. Um, unfortunately. And so obviously PETA is, is standing behind us 100% and saying this, you know what, this isn't a good thing. This isn't good for animals. Um, and so they're urging the FDA as well to, you know, amend the regulations. So that's really cool. Kind of um, an unexpected 
party that, that has joined us, but still welcome nonetheless. Um, I had posted on my blog earlier this week, um, and I'm just going to kind of summarize over this. So if you want more details, please go to my blog. Um, but the there is some dirty, dirty stuff going on with the FDA, with the former and the current FDA commissioner. Um, the former FDA commissioner, Hamburg, she, I believe, left office last year. Um, she is now, her and her husband are being charged with RICO charges. Um, and it's pretty serious. They are being charged with concealing the negative health effects of a drug associated or created by Johnson and Johnson and effectively accepting kickbacks for concealing these results. They knew that this particular drug could cause death in some cases and they chose to conceal that and they have been able to prove that there have been significant deposits to um, her bank account and her husband's bank account for concealing this information. So um, it's crazy because I googled her wanting, you know, wanting some background information on her and, and what she kind of accomplished. She'd, she'd had, um, you know, kind of an illustrious career before all this happened. She was, um, she'd accomplished quite a bit on a medical standpoint, you know, was, was huge in, um, you know, AIDS awareness and, and, you know, trying to, um, lower, you know, AIDS rates and, and that sort of a thing. And, and I forget, again, all the details are, are on my blog, but, um, you know, people, people were celebrating her quite a bit for what she'd accomplished in her career. And then all of a sudden this comes out and, and, you know, where it really affects us is that right before she left, she was, um, very involved with the, the beginning steps of creating the, um, vaping industry regs and, um, and who helped her, but the current FDA commissioner, he was very involved with her as well. The two of them were working on kind of formulating what these regulations were going to be. And so the fact that, um, she, you know, her credibility obviously has been called into question and that he was, um, Caliph was also working with her during that time before he, you know, assumed the commissioner role. It's just all very suspect, very disappointing. Um, and something that, you know, I think they've managed to conceal pretty well, but it did come out in an article and I know I've been sharing the hell out of it and I hope you guys will too, because, um, it's, it's, you know, corruption and abuse of power at its finest. Um, we, um, here in Virginia have been working on building and organizing our state chapter for the state of Virginia. Um, and I strongly encourage all of you vendors out there, store owners, you know, e-liquid manufacturers, everything, um, check and see if your state has a local chapter for Safada. If you don't, contact me. I will help you put it together. I'll tell you what you need to do. Um, but it's very, very, very important that on a state level we're organized so that we can provide support to the national level and also, um, you know, we're, we're here on the ground in, in our local areas. You know, we have access to all of the vapors and, and you know, friends, family, coworkers, you know, just the general public. Um, so we all need to kind of just organize ourselves on a smaller level to support um, what Safada is doing on the national level. So check it out. I do have a listing on my blog of the different chapters for the states. If your state, again, doesn't have one, hit me up. We'll make it happen. Um, make sure, you know, for, for all of you consumers that you've joined CASA, you're following CASA, they are frequently sending, um, you know, calls to action on different things. I know Alaska now is facing a ridiculous tax. Um, I have not yet read all the details about it, so I'll get back to you guys in the next video on that. Um, but again, keep it going. Keep, you know, educating, make your voice heard, hit up your politicians on a daily basis. If you guys have any questions or concerns, anything that you want to know more about, hit me up. I will look into it um, and, and I'm happy to, you know, help you guys with whatever you need. Um, that being said, I think that's enough information for today. Um, again, I don't want you guys to feel discouraged. I don't want you guys to be frustrated. 
Um, you know, we're going to have these bumps in the road. The FDA is going to do everything they can to make this difficult for us, but we'll continue to fight. And if we all band together, work together, um, we can make a difference. We really can. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of us out there, man. If we all make our voices heard, we all work together, we can get through this. So... That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all are having a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the next round. See ya.